Mark chapter 8, verse 34 through 38. And by the way, I still love his testimony. Him and a, another guy that uh, still, he's in the NFL. And he never did anything like that, but Russell Wilson. He's quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. And listen, he has a national stage. He's got a worldwide stage. And he made it known publicly uh, up until he got married that he was still pure. Made no qualms about it. And listen, he had one beautiful fiancé. And he said, times it was hard. He said, but I'm still pure. And he said, I'm going to stay pure until I get married. Because of his Christian beliefs. And there's times, listen, like his message says, you, you need to take your opportunities and use that for a time to witness to people. Both those men had gifts of being a quarterback. Two different styles, two different outcomes. But they took their opportunities to be that witness and use what God, the gift God gave them turn that thing around to be a, a testimony to the world. Amen? Now Mark chapter 8 verse 34 And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them Whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it. For what profiteth a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adul adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in his glory of the Father with the holy angels. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy to us. We pray, dear Lord, that you would help us. Help us as we uh, go and, and really begin to uh, tie this message up and finish it, dear Lord. Help me, dear Lord, to take and put away the things of this world and everything going on uh, to the side. And dear Lord, fill me full of your spirit. Give me unction and power from on high as I preach. Dear Lord, I pray that each and every person here would take and apply some things to our hearts and lives. For it's in Christ's name we pray, and amen. Now, many people today, and I've stated this last week, are so hardened to the Word of God and to God that they will never come to Christ and get saved. You can't get them to church like you once could. They're too occupied with self, with work, too religious to be reached. That's a sad state of affairs that we see the world in. I stated that there's many people today leaving good churches. What I mean by a good church is someone who still believes in the old book and the old hymns who preaches the gospel by faith and faith alone for salvation, who preaches against sin, who exhorts right living, Christ-like living. They go to churches like that, but yet they still leave. Some of these are lost as the tares among the wheat. Some of these are like the Laodicean church that are just cold and indifferent to the things of God. Many of these are, are lustful. They give in to the desires of the flesh and to the love of the world. Many just plainly sell out for one price or another. I asked you, do you have a price? And what is that price? 
What would it take for Satan or one of his demons to get you out of church, to get you away from God, to stop you from trusting Christ as your personal Savior? What would it take? It's a terrible, awful thing for individuals to be able to sell out to Satan or sell out Christ. I said, I know many preachers that have sold out cheap. And we looked at some examples of people who sold out cheap in the Bible. We started out looking at Adam and Eve. We looked at Esau. We looked at Samson. We looked at Achan. And then we looked at uh, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. And I believe that's where we left off last week. Did we do David last week? David would be the sixth one. Huh? I was on number six. David. Something I want you to think about David. I'm going to just kind of brush that before we go on. The Bible talked about how he went to, and we said this in 2 Samuel twelve fifteen, that Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare him, or bare unto David, and it was very sick. We know that child later died. But I want you to notice how God and the Holy Spirit wrote that verse. He did not say that Bathsheba bare unto David. He said that Uriah's wife bare unto David. You see, what got David in trouble we find in Exodus 20 and verse number 17, where the Bible says that thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Now that's in, right in the middle of the list that was given of the Ten Commandments. Of all the commandments that were given, thou shalt not covet was explained in a little more detail than the rest. He said, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's money, thy neighbor's things, thy neighbor's wife. He, he went into a little bit more detail, and so we have a specific example, and I believe God did that for a reason, because of what he was going to have to do to David, and how he was going to set that example. So when you ask David one day, David, was it worth it all? He'll probably tell you no. Everything that I went through, it cost a lot. It cost a lot of heartache, a lot of tears, a lot of running. It cost him a lot. The next person I want us to think about is Judas Iscariot. Listen, Judas was one of the chosen 12 disciples. What a privilege to be chosen of Christ to walk with Christ, to see what Christ did day in and day out, to listen to the man pray, to listen to the man teach. Remember what the Bible says about him. No man ever spake like this man spoke. This man speaks as one who had authority. Now listen, it's great to go down and, and go to the Blue Nose Camp meeting and to be able to listen to Brother Andrews preach. But we only get five days a year. Maybe more if you take and rehearse the messages again and again in your CD player or, or listen to it online or whatever. But I'm talking about listening to someone from sun up to sundown, watching him, everything that he did, every place that he went, every person that he interacted with. What opportunity 
And you know what? Where there's great opportunity, there's great responsibility. And Jesus gave Judas great responsibility. He was more responsible for what he knew, listen, than you or I. Because of his time with Christ. But the Bible records of this man in Matthew 26, 23 through 25. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man go as it is written of him, but woe unto that man whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Now listen, when you see the Bible and it says, Woe unto that whatever, listen, that is a curse that God is proclaiming. Woe is a curse. Make no mistake about that. And Christ himself said, But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Woe unto that individual that condemns me to death. Yes, he was going to the cross. He had to go to the cross and die for me and you. I'm not disputing that. But Christ still said, Woe unto him. It's not a great thing that he's done. In verse 15, he said unto them, What will ye give me? And this is Judas speaking to the priest. And I will deliver him unto you. And they co coveted with him for 30 pieces. Notice, it's not even gold. 30 pieces of silver. Let me state it like this. That's kind of the difference between asking for loonies and asking for hundreds. I mean, silver is not... I think silver is like $60, $70 an ounce. Gold is 100 and, or 1300 and some an ounce right now. So that, that's kind of like the difference of asking. Maybe it'd be more right to say asking for a nickel rather than a $100 bill. And that's what he did. And then Judas in 27 in verse 3 and 5 says, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was contemned, repented himself and brought again 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Now listen, don't get this twisted. Don't say, well, he repented himself. He, he decided, hey, that money I don't want to have. And he gave it back. So guess what? He literally sold Jesus for nothing. Wouldn't have mattered if he had kept it, he killed himself. But he literally sold Jesus for nothing. He changed his mind about taking the money. But remember, we looked at it this morning, what it says in Acts, that he went to his own place. This is not talking about him getting saved here. Remember, the, the very basic definition of repent is a change of mind. That's what he did. In a scriptural sense concerning man, it means a change of mind that leads to a change in action. A turning to God from sin. It does not... Listen, let, let me explain that a little bit further. It does not mean the same thing when you're dealing with God. God does not turn to Himself and turn from sin. Amen? When, he, when you see that referring to God, it just means He has to change how He's dealing with the people because they have changed. You see, just like with um, Jonah and Nineveh. There we go, Nineveh. 
when Nineveh was still in their sin, God had to deal with them as sinners and He was going to destroy them. But when they repented in sackcloth and ashes, the Bible says God repented. It didn't mean, he didn't like, oh, whoa, I messed up. No. It's the fact that now they are a changed people. They turn to Him from sin, and now He cannot deal with them as sinners. He has to deal with them as, if for lack of a better term, saved people. And that's the reason God looks at us different. is because when we turn to God from sin, God no longer can deal with us as unsaved sinners. He has to deal with us as Jesus Christ because we put our faith and trust in Him and the blood's been applied to us. So He can no longer deal with us the same way. Talking about God the Father. Judas... Was it worth it? Was the conniving worth it? Was the money worth it that you temporarily had? No. I wish I'd have listened more. I wish I'd have got right. I was just concerned about money and it caused me to die and go to hell. That's what I mean by listen. You, you can look at people and, and they seem religious. They can be around the right crowd and everything but still die and go to hell because they never got it. Satan hath blinded their mind. Sometimes, listen, it's a willful blinding. In other words, they allow Satan to do it. But they, they end up being like Saul. Remember, or not, Saul, Esau. Remember the Bible says about Esau that he sought repentance but never found it? I believe Esau sent away his opportunity to get saved. And when he wished he could have, he no longer could. Because the Bible said he sought it but could not find it. The next is actually a group, or shall I say a pair, Mine's letter H, yours might be H, whatever, however you're doing it. But Ananias and Sapphira. Now, Ananias and Sapphira were members of the first church. Uh, let me say this, were members of the first Baptist church of Jerusalem. They were Baptists. They baptized. They baptized by immersion, amen. They went to the lakes. They went to the rivers. They got dunked. And what a blessing it must have been for them. I have no doubt that since they were so fresh in the church that they seen the Lord Jesus Christ, seen some of the stuff they did that He did. I have no doubt, listen, they, they was there or, or somewhere about and seen the power of the Holy Spirit falling upon the disciples and how it changed and what they was able to begin to do. Because listen, they was in the book of chapter 5 in the book of Acts. They were still dealing with the area of Judea and around Jerusalem and, and Galilee area. We're still dealing with Jews here. So they were de definitely Jews and no doubt had contact with this. But the Bible says in Acts 5 verse 1, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession... Now listen, they sold some property. It was within their power to do with the money as they saw fit. They could have kept it all. They could have gave it all. They could have gave part and said, I'm giving you this part. But that's not what they did. The Bible says in verse 2, and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and bought a certain and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. They brought a part of the money at the apostles' feet. Listen, that would have been well and good if they said that's what they did. 
but it's not. In verse 4, the Bible says, And while it remained, was it not thine own after it was sold? Was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Why hast thou... Why hast not... Why hast not... Li thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. In other words, he was there. He come in and sold, said, We sold the house and we're bringing you everything from it. Now, in, in verse 3, they said, why, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? Then in verse 4, he says, Why hast thou lied unto God? Now that's where we un or get the complete understanding that the Holy Ghost is God. But you see, they lied unto God. Now how did Peter know? Because he had the Holy Ghost in him. And they lied to the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost told him, hey, he just lied. He kept back part of the price. I'm going to make him an example. You don't lie to God. And boom, he died on the spot. Listen, some kind, sometimes God does that. When you get cross with God, listen, you're walking on ve very, very dangerous ground because God can drop you in your tracks. He gives you life, He can take it away from you. Then in verses 7 through 10, you, you go and you read it and you'll see Sapphira come in. They had just buried her husband. They began to question her. And, and they said, why do you do this in your heart? Those that just buried your husband are just coming back. And she dropped dead. Boom. You don't think that put the fear of God in the church today? If something like that happened? People, listen, if stuff, if God did that today, listen, there'd be a lot fewer churches. Because there wouldn't be as many members. We'd be constantly having funerals. I'm talking about everything that calls itself a church. If God called everybody that lied about being a Christian or lied to God, you think of how many people would die. The next person I want us to think about is Demas. Demas was a servant, a soldier of the Apostle Paul. He, he was one of the men that traveled with him and, and encouraged him in different times. Could you imagine traveling around with Apostle Paul, a man of great faith? But the Bible says in 2 Timothy 4.10, Demoth hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. He was sold out to the world. Man, I, I miss what it was like to do. I miss what it was like to have. I miss what it was like to go see this or that. I'm going back home. The Bible says, He hath forsaken me, loving this present world. Can you imagine all these centuries? I believe De Demas was a saved man. But he sold out. All these centuries, the people that come in to heaven, 
Oh, that's Demas over there. Demas, why did you forsake Paul? Why did you leave him? What was worth it? Maybe he lost some crowns. What was so worth it that you did it? He'd look at you and say, nothing. It wasn't worth it. I made a mistake. I wish I could go back. I believe after eight examples in the Bible, we got the point. Many different people sell out for many different things, for many different ways. Some for money, some for pleasure. Some just for the love of the world. But I guarantee you, every one of them will say it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. You see, point number two. See, I told you we had two points. Point number one was those who sell out cheap. Point number two is when we sell out cheap. When we sell out cheap. I've got several things here that it costs us when we sell out. When we sell out cheap, we sell out our wonderful Lord and Savior. Listen, He gave it all for you and for me. And to sell him out for nothing or little of nothing is a slap to his face. He gave all that he had, all that was required. It was a great price for him to buy our pardon, to buy our salvation. And yet we sell him out for little of nothing. Maybe a, a piece of fruit maybe for a little money little money that will vanish away maybe for the things of the world sometimes it's for prestige and honor but we sell him out what would it be like to stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ and he say look what I did for you and you sold me out for nothing Remember, the Bible says we're going to give an account for what we do, whether it's good or bad, at the judgment seat of Christ. What if he's there? Look, look, look what I did for you. You couldn't live for me. You sold out for a piece of fruit. You sold out for sex. You sold out for money. Where's those things that you sold me out for now? I don't know if he's going to say that, but he may. We're going to give an account. Hey, listen, the Bible says we're crying for something. Right? The Bible says he's going to wipe away all tears. Amen? Something's bringing tears to our eyes. When we sell out cheap... We sell out our testimony for the Lord. Listen, it takes a lifetime to build a good testimony. It takes a moment to destroy it. You look at these people. The best things that are known about them is what they did wrong. You talk about David, everybody remembers Bathsheba. The second thing they might remember is he was a man after God's own heart. But I guarantee you the number one thing they remember about David is his sin with Bathsheba. You go down and you ask people in town, what do you know about David, King David? Oh, isn't he the one that slept with his neighbor's wife? It takes a lifetime to build a testimony and a, just a moment to destroy it. When we sell out cheap, we sell out our husband or wife. Listen, 
I owe my all to my wife. To, to betray her trust and love would be devastating not only to her but to me. Be devastating to my life. When we sell out cheap, we sell out our children. When we sell out and destroy our testimony and destroy what we do, listen, our children are watching and it can destroy them because of it. Look at David. He sold out cheap and look what happened to his children. Oh yeah, they learned from daddy. <laughs> yeah, daddy's got the right kind of testimony. I think I'd be better at king. Absalom tried to take the throne. Yeah, look at daddy. He went into his neighbor's wife. I think it's okay that I have my sister. Destroyed his sister. And destroyed the one that did it because Absalom killed him. It affects our children. It, 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 listen, it will destroy our children. When we sell out cheap, we sell out our church. We sell out the name and testimony of the church. Oh yeah, you know so and so, they go to this church. They might not say anything else about that church. Listen, the church can do all kinds of good works, but when you sell out your sell out cheap, listen, what people's going to associate with the church is what you did wrong. Listen, that's why we guard the church membership. You, you wouldn't believe the amount of people uh, have come here over the years and say, oh, that's my church, and never been a member. And then, oh, yeah, that's that church. Yeah, look, look how he lives. They sell out the testimony of the church. When we sell out cheap, we sell out our friends. Our friends will look at us and say, yeah, that church made a lot of difference in his life. Christ made a lot of difference in his life. Salvation made a lot of difference in his life. I don't need that. Look at what happened to him. We sell out our friends. We sell out our co-workers. We sell out our neighbors, family members. When we sell out cheap, we sell out our ministry. We destroy our opportunities in a lot of cases for ministry. Because people look at you now and say, well, yeah. Guess what they did while they was going to that church. You sell out your good name. Listen. Listen. It can destroy your good name. Think about it. You've heard the phrase, his name is Mud. You know the story behind that? A man named Mud was associated for a short time with assassination of President Lincoln. It ended up finding out that he wasn't involved. But guess what? His name was Mud. And so ever since then, that phrase has been used. His name is Mud. It's been defiled. It's been destroyed. When you sell out cheaply, you sell out your good name. Your name will be mud. Then what is your price? What 
what is it that you are interested in that will bring you down and destroy all these things in your life? You see, everything I just listed in this point, all of these happen just like that. In the moment, if, I'm, if I can steal a Bible phrase, in the twinkling of an eye, you can lose it all. Are you for sale? What would it take? You might say, well, I wouldn't sell out for a piece of fruit. Maybe you'd sell out for money. Oh, no, I wouldn't be like Ananias and Sapphira. Maybe you sell out for lust. Maybe you'd sell out for a new home. What is your price? Are you for sale? I hope you can take this message or these two messages. Put them together. Use them. Help to see and understand in your life. What would it take for Satan to steal my testimony? My life? My name? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father,